Welcome back to Information Warfare and You. Last time we learned all about how our communications platforms have been fundamentally corrupted by countless outside actors all pulling in different selfish directions. We learned all about how we can't take the unbiased nature of information from once credible sources for granted, and how most things you see have been ideologically tainted long before ever having gotten to you. We talked about the weaponization of memes, and, more unfortunately, the weaponization of people's ignorance. You fat fucking ant. Ignorance to the fact that their extreme expressions of discontent are often exactly what these countless bad actors wanted in the first place. You'll notice a recurring theme in this series. Getting people to do things is always going to be way easier if you let them think it was their idea the whole time. What's the next logical step down this path? Machine learning. A CPU is a neural net processor, a learning computer. Real quick before that, make sure you check out part one in this series about mimetic warfare to get caught up. I've placed the link in the description. So machine learning, what the hell is that? Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. I mean, I know what a machine is, I know what learning is, but why is it a little different when you put those two words together? Hi, Super Nintendo Chalmers! Well, it's the study of how you get machines to do shit for you without explicit instructions, hopefully the correct things you want them to do. Machine learning is a critical component in the efforts to develop artificial intelligence. More specifically, machine learning is the scientific study of algorithms and the statistical models that fuel them in their quest to make what they have been programmed to believe are the correct decisions. Algorithms are like vacuum cleaners of data that spit out decisions based on everything they've sucked up to date. The more you feed these things, the better they get at their jobs. Think of it like a person. When you're born, you don't know shit and can't even make a decision. Looks like a daikini baby. Let alone a well thought out and insightful one. A baby algorithm might as well just be yelling, WAH! I don't know shit! But then it starts getting fed a stream of data. When that algorithm becomes a toddler, it's still like, HELP! I don't know how to do things! But I can sort basic things into categories. It keeps ingesting more and more data as time goes on. It's also been receiving feedback for the decisions it's made for the entire time, from both users as well as administrators. When this fucker's a little kid, it's gonna be all like, What's this? I've seen this. This is kind of like that other thing, so it must be that thing too, right? You get the sledgehammer effect. The point is, algorithms begin with very limited capability. Us humans live life and gain experience. That experience informs future decisions, and the more experience you have, the more informed your decisions should be, right? Now replace you with an algorithm, and life experience with any and all data relevant to processing that algorithm's desired output. So as these little shits mature and keep eating and eating all of your data, what's next? It's almost better to just give you a few examples. Who's got a Gmail address? I know I do. In fact, the vast majority of people do. Not only that, but a lot of people are also connected to their Google account more often than not, whether it's on their PC, laptop, or mobile phone. Now everything you search while you're logged in as yourself is cataloged. All of the data you send back and forth over Gmail, or Messenger, or anything really that you think is private is actually now the property of Google. And not just Google, all of the people Google sells all of your information to on the reg. It's not just written information and search habits either. Have you ever used Google Maps? Ever wonder how it just knows where the traffic is bad or where there's delays for public transportation? Yeah, weird, right? Remember that thing in the terms of service that you agreed to? Fucking of course you don't. Everyone just wants the app and doesn't have time to read any of that shit. And definitely cannot be bothered to sacrifice any measure of newfound convenience. By the way, you agreed to tell it where you are and how fast you're going at all times. So did everyone else. That's why it works. You know, like a board collective. So who else is fucking you like this? Well, basically everyone at this point. Amazon's a big one. Netflix. Or anything like it any online store. Everything. If you happen to be a baby boomer that's watching this and think you're off the grid because you shred your paper credit card statements that you still get for some reason, I got some bad news for you. You got roped into the grid the very second you registered an email address of any kind to start sharing a bunch of unvetted old people shit to Facebook. And regardless of your age, if your argument has ever been, this one might be fake, but the idea is good then you're already lost to the tribalism that decades of being beaten down by life has guided you into. You disgrace! You are everything that's gone wrong in this world! You are self-consumed, no talent, mediocre piece of shit! 
and I've earned my right to say it. I've earned my right to say it. My right to say it. So if every search engine and every forum and every store, dating app, food delivery, or ride sharing app are all swapping your personal information back and forth like a cheap whore. Hey, this jacket is awesome. Ooh, and it's tighter than dick skin, man. What are the consequences? Nothing seems that different right now, does it? The reason everything doesn't seem too different than the time before the internet. Yes, I vividly remember those days. Well, there's two reasons. One is confirmation bias, and the other is a meticulously curated existence every time you go online. Let me put this statement another way. The consequence is just the normalization of everyone online getting so goddamn mad when people disagree with them. Think about it for a second. Platforms vacuum up your data from everything you search for, buy off Amazon, order from delivery.com, everything you share on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Oh the list goes on forever. It is so good. If I continually share material, mm. or comment on material, mm. or search for material that is of a particular political ideology, mm. it'll keep prioritizing putting that shit in front of my face every time I log in. Why would they do that? Well, they want to maximize watch time on their platform so they can shove more paid advertising, or as they like to call it now, sponsored content, down your throat. I get it. Donate the player. Hate the game. All the important points seem pretty clear, no? They think they control the galaxy. I disagree. Don't hate the player. Hate the game, son. Or stop playing it. But the byproduct is unfortunate, especially for dummies that don't really get what the hell is going on around them in this evolving digital space. Every time everyone logs in, all you see is shit that you're into, be it news, politics, entertainment, music, etc. On a long enough timeline, if you're unaware this is happening, you're going to think that's just what's out there, when in reality that little bastard of a preteen algorithm is feeding you dopamine by further confirming everyone's already rampant biases. Now everyone, listen up. This is not a partisan issue. This has nothing to do with intersectionality, so please cram that left versus right bullshit for the time being. All sides can benefit from reframing their perspective with the platforms they take for granted right now. All of this is motivated by profit, greed, and the Silicon Valley mindset of move fast and break things. The implication is that you can get a lot of shit done in the realm of the shady while a slow-ass government tries to play catch-up. Now that's not to say capitalism is a bad thing. It's a surefire way to motivate people to innovate. Ultimately, it was our choice as functioning adults to choose to click yes on the terms of service for all the things to initiate the data siphon on our lives. We chose to benefit from the convenience of GPS-based maps and instantaneous communication with friends and loved ones on the other side of the globe. Just know that these businesses are not doing any of this out of the kindness of their hearts. Regardless of how companies like Google, Amazon, or Facebook try to appear like benevolent dictators, be wary. They're ushering in a new age of convenience based on control. And it's under the insidious guise of progressivism, which is kind of weird. And that appeals to a large chunk of the population, especially those on the younger side of the spectrum. Those meat grinders are still fueled by people too when you think about it. People who profess to not only enjoy their 80 hour work weeks for a substandard salary, but that they're fulfilled by it because they're really changing the world. Hashtag grind, hashtag fulfilled, hashtag blessed. This shit gets to me a little because when I meet younger people with these kinds of jobs, that childlike parroting of company ideals and fulfillment reminds me of how I thought when joining the army as a teenager. Here's a little rule of thumb for life. People who want to treat you like shit or put you in a shitty spot typically try to get you young. So if you happen to be a teenager watching this, ask all the questions. Just don't be a little shit about it. You can say anything you want to anyone in life. You just need to think a little about how to say it first. That was a lesson from my mom when I was a little kid. But let's get back on track. This new algorithmic paradigm is not only an advertising agent to sell you shit. It's not only an agent of data brokerage between platforms. It's a normalizing agent used by reinforcing biases and further sharpening the algorithmic sword in the process so the cycle can improve each and every time you log in. Last time we talked about everyone having their fingers in the pie pulling in different directions during modern day meme warfare. The clever memes are only the beginning. Figuring out how to manipulate the undisclosed parameters of the algorithms is the other part. Manipulating algorithms from the outside is tricky business. The best landscape to look at in order to learn about this is the YouTube algorithm in my opinion. Because of the massive user base and by extension, its dataset. This is a YouTube monetization screen. 
I personally haven't made any money off of it, but there's plenty of people who have had a lot of success. It's only natural in your life to want to chase positive reinforcement, especially if it's the kind you genuinely crave and care about. Making fat fucking stacks doesn't hurt either. YouTube is filled with people trying to make quality content and present it to what they hope will be a large audience so they can use their creative impulse to make a living. But what if the content creator is purely motivated by making money? Even worse, what if the content creator is a huge sack of shit? This footage is from an internet scandal that occurred starting back in 2014 but didn't hit the mainstream till about 2016. It was dubbed ElsaGate. So what the hell was it? In short, it was a ton of horrible people realizing that a lot of parents get sick of their little kids being a pain in the ass so they park them in front of a tablet or a smartphone. They choose a little kid video and let our young little cunt of an algorithm take the reins while they take a shit or pour a glass of cheap white wine mommy juice. Uh oh. But the bad people figured out how to tag their videos with all the things little kids would want to watch. When all of them are tagged this way, they latch an algorithmic ride on this little kid's soon to be bad time. That little kid's kinda fucked. One's tagged this way, so is the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So you caught up on Game of Thrones while the kid was in the playpen with an iPad just behind the couch that you could watch, just to make sure something bad didn't happen, right? Well, unfortunately, something bad was happening the whole time. You just didn't see it. This shit is fucked up and traumatizing for a little kid. Little kids' minds are fragile. Now you're probably asking, wouldn't it have just been easier to do something that was actually kid-friendly and not traumatizing to him? Yeah, man. To this day, like two years later, I still ask myself what motive someone would have had. Five. We're on express elevator to hell. Going down. The money would have ostensibly been the same if a little baby was sitting in front of video after video. I guess some people are truly evil pieces of shit. There's a piece of a quote from the New York Times I found from a pediatrics professor named Michael Rich. He said, the negative and traumatizing effects are present when characters they thought they knew and trusted were shown behaving in an improper or violent manner. It wasn't just seeing the bad things. It was seeing things they thought they could trust doing those bad things. To a little kid, that means a lack of safety in something they thought was stable. To those who have never known childhood turmoil, a lapse in trust due to abuse or an improper perception of cause and effect that flips expectations can take years to repair. What's crazy is that this shit show wasn't actually properly addressed until 2017. But you can't just be an asshole and throw red pills at the parents who are just trying to get a second to themselves. Meh, just watch your kid. Look, I see my friends with kids, they love them. But that shit can be brutal. A lot of people do, as they say, just watch their kid. But who could have ever known something like this would have happened? YouTube? Yeah, sure. I could see it, but YouTube Kids? That was being billed as the safe place. But yeah, I'll say it a little more nicely now. People still do attempt to manipulate algorithms. Parents, if your kid is watching sequences of autoplayed videos on a platform that specializes in user-produced content, just be careful. If you need a goddamn second to breathe, maybe choose a longer video that you've previously vetted. And if you want your little one to go down a rabbit hole so you can get some time to yourself, just Chromecast that shit to your TV and sit with them as you watch something with your headphones on your tablet or phone. Or pick up a Switch if you have the resources. Those things are awesome. But yeah, that's algorithms and you in a nutshell, guys. What you'll notice now is platforms like YouTube and Facebook making continuous adjustments to their algorithms. They'll still cause things to be deleted or blocked that shouldn't be sometimes. They'll still let other things nobody thought of yet slip through the cracks sometimes. They'll also continue to learn from every piece of footage uploaded and every search or view from their users. They'll even learn from their mistakes. Remember, algorithms aren't inherently good or bad, they just are. The ones we have right now that are affecting everything from your shopping list to the flow of traffic while you're driving are still just learning. They're teenagers at best. Teenagers with parameters put there by humans. Teenagers that use those parameters because they don't have what sentient humans call common sense. All of that has to be artificially shaped. The sword is sharpening constantly and exponentially, and sometimes that can be irritating to all of us, viewers and creators alike. But at the end of the day, the convenience of everything we want right away in our digitally curated existence means more to us than the consequences. As long as you know what those consequences are, you can more effectively navigate your digital existence. Well. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. 
If you're still here, that means you enjoyed this on some level. Please subscribe to this channel for future installments of this series, as well as other content that I upload regularly. Our next episode's going to build on this concept of machine learning and we're going to take it one step further. Artificial intelligence. So stick around and be a part of it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go! Go! Go, Charlotte! It's your birthday! When you holla, it's your birthday! You see fly, it's your birthday! You know, we don't know fuck, it's your birthday! Family club, powerful pop, Maya Gadali! It takes a club, and I have a six time for me club! Don't give me hope, it's a little pop! Family club, powerful pop! You can't know!